Forever Bamboo is an Italian company. Kela is supporting this company to utilize the potential of bamboo in green, uh, in green circular economy. Their distinguishing feature is the width of their model exceeding the mere bamboo plantation towers to a more complex structure offering um, uh, carbon neutrality solutions and expanding in other industries such as electric mobility and bioplastics. Today, her topic will be a bamboo-centered uh, model of circular economy from bioplastics to carbon neutrality. Kiala, the floor is over to you. Thank you, and uh, thanks everybody for um, giving us the opportunity to participate in this great event. What I have found so much interesting about this event that, uh, is that uh, we have uh, the cultural now, I feel that we have the cultural background uh, to set up a real, uh, a real industry, an industry that, that starts from the raw material and the uh, answer uh, in uh, every other industry of uh, Europe. So um, I would like to, to explain how uh, we decided to, to found uh, this company in 2014. Okay. It was founded in 2014, as, uh, uh, as uh, Professor Molari has told, uh, Forever Bamboo has a kind of cultural tradition in uh, Europe since the 19th century, due to the, the fact that during the international exposition of uh, Paris, uh, the Japanese boot uh, was uh, um, expo exposed, uh, exposed the bamboo plant, some bamboo, and so the decorative bamboo has been uh, copied in many gardens, in uh, many arist aristocracies garden all over Europe. Then uh, there is a quite solid tradition in bamboo processing in Europe. If we think about boats, furniture, textile, also in uh, little terms, uh, paper, and uh, also many other little sectors, Yet, there is a, a bamboo, bamboo plantation is a pretty new industry in, in Europe. Uh, as we know, the majority of industrial forests are still located in Asia, in, Asia, in Indonesia, in India, and so forth, in, in China, of course. <laughs> so, uh, the talent is uh, still now, and also, uh, and also is still now, and it was uh, much more in 2014, fill the gap between the raw material demand and its avail availability in Europe. So we have created Forever Bamboo in 2004. In the last few years, uh, the, due to the pandemic emergency, the uh, naval, naval transport industry has been reshaped and uh, there is a, a sort of monopolistic concentration. That means that, is, that there is a, an increase of transport price. And of course, in this scenario, it is crucial to have a st stable supply chain of raw material because this can reduce the cost of pollution linked to the transportation. And if we sell bamboo as a sustainable source, we can't uh, take it from the other side of the world. And so we have uh, also to uh, ensure to the other industries the, um, a stable supply chain. So the other industries can plan in the long run and decide to use bamboo with a raw material. So these can truly develop um, an industry strong and competitive. And the, 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 last, uh, the last goal that we have is a production chain 100% made in Europe, which is, of course, for all of us a strategic project. So what is our uh, contribution? So what is it? So the challenge of the bamboo industry in Europe? The challenge, as I told you, uh, our goals are connected uh, one to the other and also to other industries and uh, to all the manufacturing process. The first and crucial one, as I, as I said, was to create a 100% made in Europe bamboo supply chain. The reach of this goal also uh, support uh, um, also the values of bamboo as a sustainable and a Europe-grown bamboo doesn't create pollution impact linked to this transportation, okay? The other important thing is that um, bamboo is a sustainable alternative to plastic. And as we have shown in the previous interventions, also an alternative um, to wood and to construction materials. And uh, bamboo is also, as we will see later, a powerful carbon sink. And uh, um, of course, uh, the challenge is to develop a relevant market. As we, see, as we saw for construction, where there was no, um, there was, uh, no laws allowing to use bamboo in construction, 
The same problem is uh, for carbon sink activity. Bamboo is a great uh, carbon, um, carbon capture uh, plant, uh, yet uh, there is a uh, not so complete regulation that allows us to use it as a carbon sink uh, in um, an official way. In any case, bamboo have, uh, um, have to be uh, have to be considered and we have to challenge for that a key player for the sustainability challenge. So this is mainly a cultural challenge for us as an industry and also for the um, academic because uh, this, uh, we need to acknowledge uh, this, uh, this potential, this, uh, all this potential above uh, in order to, to, to uh, make people understand how bamboo can be positive for all Europe. So now I, I will go to the pillars of a bamboo business model, uh, forever bamboo business model. Is a, uh, first of all, um, our model was based on three pillars. So the first one is the full property the, of the land. That means that we have the complete control and we don't have any conditionment to rental agreements. So uh, we take uh, uh, lands that are uh, neglected because they, are ex they have been exploited from uh, long, many years, from a long time, uh, to the industrial, um, with the industrial agriculture. So uh, we um, only require that there is a flat surface because the machinery treatments are easier with a flat surface and uh, access to water in order to, uh, so the presence of a pit or a river, in order to make uh, the um, growth easier. Because uh, at the beginning of the growth, bamboo needs, uh, is a very, as I, as I say, bamboo is a very spoiled child. So at the beginning, in its, uh, the bamboo plantation needs a lot of care. It needs water, but not too much water because it doesn't uh, work well with mud, as uh, Mr. Crozet had said before. And uh, so uh, we, we need basically lands uh, that are flat uh, with water. And even though they were almost uh, very arid, uh, we have worked um, with a protocol to make them, uh, this is the second pillar, with an exclusive agricultural protocol that have integrated biodynamical, biological, and symbiotical principle. And uh, along with that, uh, we have um, as a, inside this pillar, there is the respect of a local flora and fauna. So um, this, this means that um, our plantations are actually a temple of biodiversity. Diversity. So we include the coppice, mixed wood, fruit trees, agricultural land, and olive oil or, or native grade varieties. Of course, according to the area, because we have uh, plantations in many regions of Italy. The third pillar is fundamental, of course, uh, because we are a company. We need uh, we need to ensure us a revenue, and also to our to our um, associates. So we have an agreement with um with another partner that is Consortium Bambu Italia (CBI). Uh, and we have an agreement to sell them the old produ production of canes and sprouts. And this guarantees um, a revenue of uh, almost a percent average in the first 15 years. That, uh, that means uh, we have a tagline uh, for Red Bamboo, 100 years of dreams. That means that the, grow, the age, the lifespan, the average lifespan of our plants, of our kind of bamboo, which is a uh, moss bamboo or uh, Philostachys edulis, uh, is uh, 100 years, uh, which means that uh, the, the remaining 85 years, uh, the revenues are even higher because the plant is uh, adult, is uh, full grow, fully grown. This is a glimpse of our forest. Sorry. I, okay, this is a video. I hope you can see it. Okay, so after um, this first, uh, uh, the first year, so we have developed a stronger model. We have kept the original pillars of the bamboo plantation and as a core, and we have now many other distinguishes, distinguishes features in order uh, to with our model exceeding the mere bamboo plantation, as I, as I said, and uh, we have now a very a more complex structure. So. The three upgraded pillars are, uh, are now, uh, first, uh, the agricultural technique. So the bamboo plant plantation is now uh, 
managed to, uh, through patent pending protocols. So we are working with the same biological, biodynamical and symbiotical principles, yet we have integrated them, merged them with an, uh, an exclusive, um, oh, this is in Italian, sorry, but we have kept these three principles. Then we have created an exclusive management of a targeted cutting. So basically, we target a stripe of land each year. And so we cut just the debt, which is one third of the land. And so the other, the other stripes help it to regrow and it stimulates the growth of the, of the total land of the bamboo plantation. Of course, we had, as Mr. Crozet said, a trial and error process. As in the first, um, and the, the errors were very costly, as he told. So it's uh, it's really true what he said, because uh, we found that, uh, for instance, the problem of too much water or no water was very important. Also, the problem of wind, and uh, so this uh, this learning process have been integrated in the in the protocol that we have set up. Sorry, okay, we have the patent pending. The second pillar is uh, the carbon sequestration. So, the carbon sequestration model is that we have created a new business unit that is a um, certified carbon sequestration called the Forever Zero CO2. Uh, we have been told in the previous, um, in the Mr. In, in Ms. Eva Samalea presentation, that the average, there are many studies about that, the average sequestration of an hectare of bamboo is 50 tons of CO2. This is very much, yet we have uh, improved uh, these, these performances with our plantations, thanks to the protocol that I've said before, to the first pillar. This is what a um, normal, uh, normal woodland in Italy, so the same condition of uh, latitude and uh, climate uh, conditions, so, uh, absorbs in one year. So almost eight tons of CO2 equivalents. And this is what our plantations absorb in one year, 36 times the, the, the absorption of CO2 of a normal, uh, a normal woodland. So this is a big result that we make um, certified by RINA, which is an international uh, organization that is uh, specialized in certifications for uh, technical uh, issues. And INDACO, which is a spin-off of the University of Siena in Tuscany. And uh, uh, these two certifications allow us to sell to the companies, to the polluting companies, an equivalent of the carbon credit in terms of a certificate where we uh, sell the right, sell the, um, the right of a compensator in, uh, com in comparison with our compensation. So the net compensation that we have uh, with our LCA, because we, of course, we make a little pollution with our machineries, with our office uh, and with our activities. So the net is uh, 2, uh, 261,000 per year. We can sell this right to the uh, other companies per each actor. So if you have uh, a company which, uh, which make a pollution, you can have this, uh, uh, this uh, um, forest dedicated to you and uh, we sell with a, per with a time perspective of 20 years uh, because we want, uh, um, this is the direction that the world is leading to and of course we want uh, that the company is ready that uh, have a long-term strategy and we want to, to be a strategic partner in this, uh, in this challenge for sustainability of companies. The third Chiara? pillar... Chiara, sorry, sorry, yes. only yes. five minutes left. Okay, okay, I'll be fast. <laughs> So the last pillar is bioplastic. Basically, we have a lot of biomass. So we have to find somebody to give this biomass to. And of course, if we burn this biomass, it wouldn't be a, a real carbon sequestration. So we have um, made a partnership with an Italian company called Mix Cycling, and we are exploring the industrial plastic world. I don't know if you, if you can see some products. These are some products. We are testing our bioplastic and it, has, it uh, is uh, giving very interesting results uh, as uh, uh, the other businesses, uh, the other industries for, for, um, have shown. And uh, the results and the performance are comparable to the one of uh, old school plastic, let's say. So the new business model to make to summarize 
in the bamboo plantation with patent pending protocols, the partnership for bioplastic and the carbon neutrality solution. This uh, strategic business, of course, as I told you, are inter intertwined and uh, they are part of a, of a unique strategy to create a um, leading holding of for green economy because we, we are entering also their businesses which are uh, which are um, very close to, to our business as electric mobility. This is uh, to show you how, much, uh, how big was our growth. We had an exponential growth in the last two years uh, with the uh, crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, in this way, we have shown how our model is uh, scalable and strong. And of course, uh, this model has to be, um, has to be um, kept uh, consistent with our founding values. This is the growth in actors and the growth in terms of partners. And, uh, to keep this model um, consistent with our funding values, even with a strong, with a bigger growth as we are planning to go in potential in an international market, we have applied for the B Corp certification. So we are going to be a B Corp certified company in the next few years. So what is our contribution to the industry challenges? Okay, after seven years, uh, we uh, would like to take a stock and uh, we make uh, an evaluation of what we have done, both as a company and as an industry. So bamboo-based bioplastic is a, has a huge potential and many advantages, also in terms of carbon offsetting, because the plastic industry is one of the highest in terms of carbon emission and only concrete and steel and iron are worse. And the plastic waste, of course, is very polluting. We got, uh, certain, as, I, as I said, the carbon sink capacity of our forest certified to offer the CO2 compensation. Our challenge now is that uh, is uh, to include the bamboo in the list of the carbon sink species and develop, of course, a relevant market in terms of laws and in terms of uh, marketplace. Another goal that we are working on is the creation of the proper legal framework for local carbon market as it in the acknowledgement of carbon sequestration as an agricultural product. Because now the problem is that agriculture can't, uh, can't sell the uh, carbon, carbon uh, certificates. So this is a key, a key point also for uh, other, uh, other players in the industry in the agricultural industry. And this, of course, uh, will unlock an, a great earning potential for bamboo pharmax in Europe. And uh, the cultural challenge uh, we want to win uh, is to make people understand the great potential of bamboo as a material and also in the fight for climate change. That's it. I hope it fits the five minutes and uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chiara.